Now, let me start by saying, of course, this being the end of the holy month of Ramadan, to the residents of Johannesburg and fellow councillors of the Muslim faith, Eid Mubarak, we have been with them throughout this holy month of Ramadan at different events and meetings, sharing with them their contributions to those who are vulnerable and poor in our communities. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this report is a report back to the people of Johannesburg on the basis of the work that we've been doing at the back of the mandate that we were given by the people of Johannesburg in 2011. It is in line with our commitment to accountability and transparency and ensuring that when you are given a mandate, you have a duty to report back to the people and to say what you have done. Taking into account that the people of Johannesburg have entrusted us in the past, in the past five years uh, with the resources uh, of budgets that range from 26 billion to the current 54 billion, so budgets that have been growing exponentially. So we have a duty and responsibility to report to the people of Johannesburg on what this city has been doing in terms of the mandate the people have given us. We present a strategic assessment of the progress against the mandate received. And for us, it is also an opportunity to tell the story of Johannesburg. It is a city that at the end of the presentation I'll indicate is celebrated by many, both local and international. Because some of the ideas that we've put forward are considered by international institutions as far reaching in terms of what they can achieve and contributing significantly to the current discourse as the world leads towards the Habitat 3 conference to be hosted in Quito in October this year to the discourse about cities and our urban futures. And talking about our urban futures, the focus being to a large extent on cities in the global south, the developing country cities, with a specific focus on African cities that are experiencing the highest levels of urbanization and migration. Some of this forced migration as a result of famine, hunger and poverty, but some of this migration as a result of natural processes of urbanization as people go to urban centers in search of opportunity. And some of this as a result of wars and challenges that are faced in some of the countries that continue to experience conflict.